Welcome to the Rock the Stage Show. Each week, international media expert Rich Bontrager has in-depth and personal conversations with celebrities, top leaders, authors, speakers, and media professionals. Now, from the Rock the Stage studios, here's your host, the Trigger, Rich Bontrager. Welcome back. Rock the Stage, Sunday night once again here, 7 o'clock, check your walk, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Back for another exciting conversation with global leaders, influencers. And tonight we are literally going around the world. New Zealand is where our stop off is for tonight. And we're going to have a great time. But let me ask you this question here How do you deal with stress? How do you deal with conflict? How do you deal with childhood memories? You know, how, 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 how do we cope with all that? How does your mind work on that? What exactly is going on in your brain and the functionality of your brain? Why can you cope with it sometimes? Why can't you cope with it sometimes? Maybe with your relationships, your husband, your wife, your boss, your children. Why do they not listen to me? Why do I not listen to them? And it goes on and on and on. Tonight, my guest is going to discuss brain profiling. And if that's not enough, tonight, you're going to go inside my brain. <laughs> we are going to share some brain profiling facts that she dug around, knocked around, dusted off, and learned about Trigger. Thanks for being with us here tonight on Rock the Stage. It's going to be a great one. Remember, as we go on, drop your messages, your questions, your comments. Give us some love in the chat as we go on with the show here this evening. Since 2004, Nolene has been providing genetic brain dominance profiling for students, families, couples, businesses. And as a child, she so struggled with dyslexia. And she found little support in the education system for that. Once she understood her own brain profile, Nolene developed a compassion for herself that could only come from truly understanding how her brain worked. How would you like to do that for yourself? Welcome, Nolene Levinson, to Rack the Stage Show tonight. Hi. So the brain, right right there, the people that have been watching for a long time on Rock the Sage have already got 10 jokes lined up. Do you get that in your business a lot? Do you, do you automatically get the Weisenheimers when they say, don't go in, you'll never get out? <laughs> well, I have to say my tagline forever has always been, if you have a brain, this is for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> Insert the Wizard of Oz right there. There we go. I have Scarecrow right there. Wow. Now, this is something that many people, I mean, we've heard of business profile, we have personality profile, but you're taking it a little bit deeper. You're really going under the hood in a much deeper way, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. Because a lot of the profiles will tell you, you know, that you're a leader or that, you know, you're this color. And there are, there are so many types of profiling out there, I can't describe. <laughs> but what makes the one I do unique? is it tells me what happens to you under stress. Because we know that when you're relaxed, everything is peachy. And then for some people, when, when they're stressed, everything can just go to hell. So it really is unique in that way, because I want to know what happens to you when you're stressed. If you've got a deadline, how are you going to behave? How are you going to behave if you're, if you're anxious about what you want to do? I need to know that. Um, and Honestly, there isn't a time at the moment that people are not stressed. I mean, have you ever come across more of a stressful time? I think not. <laughs> well, and again, some people just blank. Stress is like, squirrel, I'm gone. And that's somewhere in all this too, right? It, 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 it happens more often than people will admit, don't they? Absolutely. And I mean, I, you know, the glazed donut suddenly, you know, they're, you know, the deer in the headlights. And that is a particular kind of profile. And I can't tell you how many times I see that profile. And actually, when I worked, I worked with children for 30 years with learning challenges from autism to ADD to ADHD. And there are so many of those children who have that kind of profile where they just literally shut down. And once you understand that and you learn to work with it, it's miraculous. Now, is this widely accepted or is to some people, is this kind of woo woo is kind of science fiction stuff. How do people react when you say, I'm a brain profiler? <laughs> it's really funny that you should say that because uh, as you can hear, I'm from South Africa 
And there was a company that used to um, send me their shortlist of staff to profile so that I could find the correct uh, person for the job. And in the African culture, people who do what I do are, are called Sangomas, they're witches. And the black people really thought I was a witch because how on earth could I know the stuff about them? So this was not something that they had ever come across before. I had used muscle checking, kinesiology to get the information. There are no questionnaires. I was literally a witch to them. So, yeah, it has a little bit of a woo-woo aspect. But once you start getting the information, it's cool. Well, just so everyone knows, uh, prior to this, we did get on a, a call together, and she did do her full test. We went for about an hour, and as we get into this, you're actually going to see some of the video, some of the interview from that, but you, you have some terms that people may not get. You, you talk about the brain dominance, but then you talk about your ear, your eye, your legs. Which one of those hold dominance? So before we start throwing out terms, can you help explain some of the arms, the legs, the eyeball stuff here? <laughs> okay, so we have a way of inputting information and we have a way of expressing it. And the way you get information into your brain is through your eye and your ear. And the way we express it is through the way you communicate and the way you take action. And I'm using your hand and your leg for those two and your eye and your ear for your input. But I'm not actually talking about the actual ear or the actual eye, <laughs> okay? I'm talking about the part of your brain that does the reading, that does the listening, the part of the brain that does the communicating. I'm always really talking about the brain. So, so when we got into that, uh, I had to actually stop you and say, by the way, we're talking about the left ear. My left ear is deaf. It's worthless. And you paused and went, let me think about that for a second. <laughs> that is super interesting. So when you're the, okay. So now we're talking functionality yeah. versus genetic dominance. Yeah. So functionally, zero. Mm -hmm. But actually, it's the part of the brain that does the listening. Mm -hmm. That's the bit that I'm looking at. Yeah. I'm actually always looking at your brain. I'm actually not looking at the actual ear. Right, right, right. That's I was curious because you use a term that to me only means one thing, but I get you. <laughs> I understand, but I'm actually looking at your brain. I'm not actually yes. looking yes. at the ear itself. Mm -hmm. So would you say that you're sensitive to people's tone of voice? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I pick up on the tone and the attitude without them even knowing that I'm picking up on the tone and the attitude. 100%, because that's what you tuned into. So yeah. your brain is doing the listening. Do you, mm -hmm. Are you following me? Oh, yeah. Yes, and definitely. The brain is interested in, in what the sound is. And so if I say, hi, Rich, you already know. You know what's going on in my life. I haven't said anything yet. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just had that happen this week with a colleague. We had one phone call, like five minutes. We didn't have time to talk further. I called back two days later. I said, boom. They go, you hit the nail on the head. <laughs> Does that type of stuff happen when people hear the term, they're trying to equate it, they're trying to understand it, but then something else in their life doesn't match up with the normal presentation you do? Well, you know, I love it when that happens because it makes me stop and think. Because you're talking about functional dominance and I'm talking about genetic dominance and they're not the same thing, but I hadn't considered explaining that in enough detail so that you would have understood that. But it was hell of a useful to me because now instead of referring to your left ear, I could refer to the part of your brain that is doing the listening. <laughs> I could then use that instead because obviously that left ear isn't doing it. So let's start with that stress stuff. Where does stress go? Everyone, we all receive it, but we all, like you said, compartmentalize, deal with it, factor it, talk through the process of here comes stress. Now your brain takes over. Okay, so that's such a good question because your profile is like a default setting on a computer. It switches on under stress, yeah? And it's when your heart is racing. So the moment your heart is racing, you're panicking, you're frightened, you're angry, sometimes even overexcited, yes. your brain switches into your profile. So I'll give you an example of this. I was driving along and I you know, went over the speed limit just for a few seconds and a cop found me and turned around honestly my heart was racing a million miles an hour 
and I don't speak under stress. And so he was at the window and talking to me and I just nodded and accepted everything he said. And I just wanted to get the hell out of there <laughs> because I'm also left leg dominant and, I, and that left leg just wants to sidestep trouble and get the hell out. Yeah. And on the way home, I could have thought a thousand things I could have said, but not one of those things came out of my mouth at that moment. So and which side of your brain is working then? When that happens to you, where does it go? So because I am right brain dominant, my left brain switches off and my left brain happens to govern the way I speak. And honestly, this is something that, that I've had to learn to overcome in, over years. So I do radio interviews when I lived in South Africa. And my husband used to say to me, your first few sentences are gobbledygook. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> but I, I love you, dear. I got to work on this. Yeah, right. Uh, exactly. I got to work on this. So we, we work out strategies. How do we overcome these things? And I, and I had to do a lot of public speaking, and my heart would be racing. I'd have to work out how I was going to do this. And so we work on strategies to get around your profile. But when you know that that's your profile, you forgive yourself because you begin to go, okay, I'm sorry. I'm very nervous. I don't speak really well under stress. And immediately when you say that, your heart starts to calm down because everybody laughs and it's okay. But you know what I'm saying? So we, we no. find strategies to help us. You know, with a cop, I, I didn't find a strategy. I just wanted to get the hell out of there. But growing Which up, I, because you mentioned children, that growing up process, people do not understand if Johnny's just that way, Susie's just that way. When you're, when, when you're saying stop, understand Johnny and Susie and what's going on and you will help their learning process. And when we went through my profile, we reflected on some of my early childhood and how they did not understand me. Bad eyes, stutter, deaf in one ear. I was the geek and you got into there's probably things that they did or taught you that. So this ear, this ear, this side of the brain that's doing your listening is looking yeah. for stories. Because if I tell you that story, you will never forget that. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. Storytelling, number one in my life. And it's part of my media career, but it's part of my public speaking. I am a storyteller and I love gleaning stories and getting stories. And Brilliant. my brain makes it a movie. Everything in my life is a movie in my brain. I see it through film, through action, through storytelling. Exactly. 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 So if I understood that about you as a child, I could have communicated effectively with you. In our schooling system, for example, it takes you are with one teacher for a year. It takes that teacher almost a year to figure you out. And then you start the next year with a new teacher who has to start again to figure you out. Instead of starting the year knowing who you are, that would be intelligent, wouldn't it? <laughs> then I would know how to communicate with you. Mm -hmm. um, that would have made life so much simpler and much more enjoyable for the teacher and you. And likewise for parents. It's, it's really imperative to know how your brain is taking in the information, how you're listening to me or not listening to me, as the case may be. Um, and sorry. No, 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 no. My brain's going 100 miles an hour, which you now understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I totally know that. I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking about you did such a great job. Did you Google me? Did you research me? Because you pulled so much out in the moment. How did you get that and know that? Because it kept going and going. And I'm thinking, well, she, I mean, we have a mutual friend. Did she call Lillian up and say, tell me about Trigger? Did you quickly Google me overnight and check it out? How do you do this? <laughs> I didn't actually. And I, I ran out of time. I didn't, I didn't have time to do that. <laughs> and th that is the honest truth. But I, I wouldn't have done it anyway. And I don't want to know you. I don't want to have anything that can stand in the way of me getting an accurate information. I, I didn't speak to Lillian. I don't know anything about you. And I, I only know your brain profile. I, didn't, I don't know how many shows you've ever done and, and things you've done in your life. I don't want to know that. I want to be completely clear in my own brain. So when I go in to do the muscle checking, I have no preconceived ideas to get in the way. And the only thing I'm telling you is how your brain is wired and what happens to you personally when you're stressed. And that's really all I'm, I'm looking at. 
And yes, it does pull on, on memory and things that have happened to you. And it is, honestly, it is really important that it does that because you can then go back and go, hmm, okay, I can now understand why I wasn't good at that. <laughs> and I can now forgive myself for not being good at that. Yes. I grew up with a family of academics. Every one of them are bright eye dominant and I'm not. I wanted to read comics and they didn't understand why. And they kept saying to me, what's wrong with you? And I'd go, I don't know. I don't feel like there's something wrong with me. I'm just as clever as you are, but you're telling me this all the time. So I grew up feeling like, look, there must be something wrong with me because I'm not like them. Yes. And, and, and I mean, that's huge. That happens to so many people. And that's very much how my life was growing up. And we also got into that because, again, with a stutter, stress kicks the stutter in and you go higher. And in my young, young days, as I did shut down, because I didn't want to look like an idiot. Like they all thought I couldn't read. But I could read at a very high level, way above grade level. I just couldn't get it from here to here. And we discussed yesterday the speed of the brain and the mouth. You need to figure that out. Now, I, I told you. I learned that by myself. So here's the interesting bits we're coming to now. So again, it's showing me that you're, these are your outputs, your hand and your leg. And remember, I'm not really talking about the actual hand. <laughs> okay, but you're showing me that you're right hand dominant. And that right hand actually is governed by your left brain. So you have this part of you that wants to get things right. You want it, you, this is where your perfectionistic traits really come to the fore. But remember, this is, a, this is about how you speak. So the part of your brain that is doing the speaking is the left side of the brain. You know, that slow, methodical left side. But the part that's thinking is the right side that's going a million miles an hour. And I found that out right on my college years. I started to figure out after college, the speed of my brain, the speed of my mouth did not sink. And that's why I had a horrible stutter growing up. Exactly. And I had no you said that doesn't usually happen that you figure this out by yourself. Is 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 that pretty much true? Most people don't understand it left to themselves. Definitely not. I mean, that's very rare that you find someone who can figure <laughs> that out for themselves, really. <laughs> But I, I can see born. from your profile exactly why it would have happened. Absolutely. Um, and I mean, and likewise with children who've got um, auditory processing disorder. The minute I look at the profile, I understand that this is a thing. And I also balk against the word disorder because they haven't got a disorder. They've got a profile which allows them to lose information. And if you understand that, then the illness part of the problem goes away. They aren't ill. They haven't got a disorder. Now, you deal with companies, you deal with marriages, with spouses, with lovers, with children. So some of these do things kick over into a lot of different areas. So there's got to be similarities, right? You can listen to somebody for a little bit and go, okay, I, mean, I am kind of moving them here. I am kind of moving them there. Is that kind of how you help people understand family dynamics, communication? You know, Rich, I've profiled people I've known my whole life, and I didn't know their profile until I did it. Wow. I can't tell you what you're like until I see inside your brain. <laughs> Literally, wow. I just can't. So I, I can think to myself, mm, perhaps they're doing this, but it might be a part of the brain that I didn't fathom on. Because sometimes I, I do a profile of somebody, and I get a real shock, and I go, wow, is that you? I didn't think that was you. I didn't know that was you. But there, there's more to it than that because, yeah, I'm very passionate about children. I really want children to thrive. And so mm -hmm. I kind of aim my, my work at children with learning difficulties. But as you say, it's across the board. Yeah. But also, once you start to explain to parents how children need to be disciplined according to their brain profile yes. Um, yes. or how their style of discipline is actually destroying the child, um, that also really, really helps. I mean, I can give you an example of this. I don't yeah, please. Too long. So I'm right brain dominant, and the way I discipline is according to how I feel that day. 
So if I'm having a happy, relaxed day, you can jump on the bed. But if I'm stressed and I'm having a horrible day, <laughs> then I, I might growl at you for jumping on the bed. And a left brain child would go, what? So what is the rule? So is the rule I can do this or is the rule I can't do this? And so I learned this really quickly because I have a left brain son and I could see him losing faith in me and losing trust in me because I kept changing the rules. I didn't understand what was going on until I did his brain profile and I understood, uh huh. Okay, so here it goes. You can jump on the bed today, but the rule is you're not allowed to jump on the bed. Got it, mom. <laughs> okay, so I figured out how to, how to communicate according to his profile. Otherwise, I would have lost him. Marriages often attract opposites. <laughs> well, then when you get in there really after a while, you feel like I'm an idiot oh. for marrying you. <laughs> Oh, totally. We think that other person completes us. And of course, in a kind of way, they do. But then the very thing that attracted us is the thing that becomes our stumbling block. Yeah. Because exactly right. Because, of course, we, if we're right brainers and we attract the left brainer who is verbose and typically has all this detail and all we want is the bottom line. And we keep interrupting them. And then they say, You don't listen. You keep interrupting me. Okay. Sorry. So, yeah. It causes the trouble. We need and, to know what we're doing. So how can couples learn that? Because, again, that's not in a marriage counseling very often. It's not in no. a book you simply read, um, nor will most people probably take the test and learn it anyway. So <laughs> how can we help couples that are feeling that stress, but they love yeah. each other, but they hate each other? Exactly. Look, I mean, one of the things I wanted to do was teach marriage celebrants how to do this so that before you go into that marriage, you've got this clue as to what's going to happen. That'd be a good start. Yeah. I'm always I'm always into prevention as opposed to cure. But but actually, now that you're married, and I've done a lot of counselling with couples, who we do the profiles together, and we start to show them where the problems are coming in, where you're going to actually have the the stumbling blocks, and how to overcome them. So we give you coping mechanisms. So when this happens. This is what you do. So often we have a couple, one of the couples will have an explosion about something that's quite trivial. And if the person in that relationship doesn't understand that that person is actually stressed at that moment yes. and goes into the dance of the, the issue that was brought up, that's a disaster. Yeah. Instead of going, wow, I, I see you stressed. I'm sorry. Let's do let let me help you. What can I do for you? What's going on? Yesterday we got into the the idea of the mind, the dreamer, the blank kid in the classroom. They look bored. They but often their brain is still receiving and absorbing, but their mind is absorbing it visually, contextually. Can you talk about that? Because a lot of people that see it and they're like, Johnny, over here. Johnny's like, I'm right with you. I'm okay. <laughs> Actually, the funny thing is that those dreamers actually are looking out the window because they happen to be left eye dominant. Yeah. And actually, they're, they're self-soothing. They're actually dealing with their own stress and, and helping themselves to feel less stressed. And actually screaming at them actually doesn't help usually. But tapping them on the shoulder and going, hi, how are you doing? What's happening? More one-on-one -on -one would be better to bring them back instead of shouting across the room, hey, you, what's going on? That, which can humiliate a child. And, yes. the, and some children are beyond sensitive to being humiliated. Yes. And then they just never want to go back to school. I've got children that I've seen like this. They just don't want to go back. So it, we really want to have compassion. We really want to treat children with much more respect and compassion and understanding. And the only way to do that is to actually know who they are and how they work. So you're, you're talking about being very specific. You're, we're talking about individual learning techniques and challenges when curriculum yeah. is made to, here's a paintbrush and we're going to paint everything really wide and you all have yes. to fit the same. How, yes. that seems an impossible task to do what you're describing at the level that would have helped kids like me. And me. So I mean, what can be done with this? Because 
The system's not made. Now, when I did go from one school to a different school, it was a smaller school, smaller classes, greater success. When I got sick, my teacher literally came to my hospital and tutored me one-on-one, and my math scores went through the roof, and I was at the lowest of the class. I came out ahead of the class. But that's trial and error, and that's a burn accident that you never want to have happen. So how can we do this better? Well, I really, really feel if we can train um, profilers around the world to go into schools to train teachers how to recognize different profiles, we will have a different schooling system altogether. There was a school um, where I was, where I lived originally that did this to the for the teachers, and they actually put a business card and um, size profile on every child's desk. So when the teacher wasn't getting through, they'd go up to the desk, they'd look at the profile, and go. Okay, I know what you need. Let me do it this way with you. How about we do this instead? And so that school had a waiting list, I tell you what, a mile long, because those kids thrived so much, did so well, that they couldn't get into that school for love or money. And so it really is interesting when you start to realize that you're teaching individuals, they have individual needs. Um, We kind of know this, but we don't do it in the schooling system. We just, (laughs) if you don't fit in, then you're an outcast. Yes. And, and then we've got schools for outcasts. That's not okay. Right. That's, yeah. that's really not okay. We need to make a system that is inclusive and really goes to teach a child because I want you to learn something um, that will actually give you something for the rest of your life. And please believe me, when I talk to people, adults, about their childhood, they remember everything that happened at school everything yes Uh, you will be amazed how people remember that information the teachers the people who were horrible to them the horrible things that happened to them oh my word they remember it clearly like it was yesterday and i'm included in that well and one of the things we talked about during my profile yesterday was again we learned trial by error I even had to go back a grade, but I knew I was a visual, sensory dreamer, word pictures immediately. My brain, my brain is like a movie track all the time. When we finally figured that out, math was now puzzle pieces and things to move and manipulate and textually sound color. When we got that, Rich began to go like this. But again, that's part of the self-learning, self-exploratory thing. What can people be looking for? How can we pick up on what you pick up on? How can parents, school teachers, coaches, how how can they pick up on some of these little things? Go, wait a second. He's audio. He's video. He's this. He's that. Rich, you want to do away with my job? <laughs> <laughs> you need me. That's the whole, that's the, the crux of this. <laughs> Everyone go to Nolene, blow up her inbox and let her know that you need her there. That's right. There you go. That's what you need. I don't know another way in. Because again, it's trial and error. Yeah. You can you can you can try it this way, you can try it that way. And there are schools I, I can see that are starting to try to figure this out. Mm-hmm. Um, but we don't have to worry about trying. We just do it. We can just profile the kids and we'll know how to do it. We don't have to do all this trying. We know how to do this. And it's so quick, it's so easy, it's so accurate. Couldn't be easier. I'm curious because, again, we went in that totally blind from my session. What was some of the biggest takeaway learning things that we could share with the crowd? I'm, I'm giving you free roaming space to go in and expose <laughs> the brain of trigger here. <laughs> well, I think that the, the beautiful thing for me is that everything that you do, you have created your life exactly according to your profile. But you, you've got so much, and I'm, I'm looking at your profile at this minute. Okay, yeah, so that's why I'm looking fine. down. I look down at your profile here for a moment to give myself a reminder. But, but really and truly, you're playing to your strengths in every possible way. You really are doing a great job of that. And you'd know when you weren't doing that because something wouldn't feel right. Yes. And you're so intuitive. You're so good with that. And it's not that I want to say something else to you, and that is. As you get older, you're using your whole brain. You're using the left, right, top, bottom, back, front. You should be using your whole brain. 
But even as we talked about during my profile, there was a point where you said, I, I bet you're a reader, you're a reader, you're a reader. And I said, when I was young, I read everything. Now, that's interesting because growing up, I loved to read because of other physical issues in my life. I became a consummate reader, but that helped my imagination and the visualization. But as I've gotten older, you're right. I, I, I love the video version better than the book version. <laughs> exactly. So let me explain to you why that that's happened. So it's really good that you say to me that you were able to read as a child because yeah. It gives me an idea that your brain was well integrated mm. and is well integrated. Under stress, though, you go back to your profile, which is the one that prefers pictures to words. Oh, yeah. So that's that's ex exactly how that is explained. Shock for you. Well, it was so much a shock. It was a, it was a delight, actually, because what it told me is that you actually had a really good brain integration from young because you're right you're not right eye dominant you shouldn't have been a good reader and the fact that you were told me that your brain was really well integrated which means you didn't just grow up um sitting in front of a, a device it means that you got out and climbed a tree mm -hmm. and and oh, exercised yeah. and moved and which is part of brain integration yeah and we're missing that brain integration at the moment because a lot of the young children are not getting out and and playing, and playing is part of learning. Why? Because it helps the brain integration. So that told me that you did a really good thing when you were little to help your brain integrate. You shouldn't have been a good reader. You should have just done comics. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. now when you're stressed, you go back to your profile. And, and because we're tired and we're stressed, we go back to our profiles. Before I forget, there's something that keeps coming into my mind that I really want to say. And that is, Yes, there is stress that your heart is racing, but we also there are other stresses that have uh, play a part. That's emotional trauma, that's a stress that stops the brain from integrating. We have chemical toxicity that stops the brain from integrating. I want you just to know that there are other stresses that happen in the body that slow the process down and can then hinder our learning. As we head toward the finish line here, I do want to ask a little bit about, you mentioned the idea of ongoing learning. As we get older, you need to keep learning, changing, adapting. How can we do that? Because we're not even aware what the first part of this you're talking about. We don't even understand our brain, but now you're saying you need to keep growing so your brain never gets tired of growing. Oh, that's a beautiful question because neuroplasticity is just the, the most important thing. And um, I, I was really blessed to have the most incredible father who was a psychiatrist, but he was also an artist and he wrote uh, poetry. And at 85, he decided he was going to learn to play the saxophone. He had always wanted to, and this is what he was going to do at 85. But, but uh, to interject here, at, at 50, he decided he was going to do Tai Chi and he became a Tai Chi master. So at 85, he learned to play the saxophone. He was I mean, I, I couldn't tell you how much I admire this man, but he was the epitome of neuroplasticity because he learned to read music, which is such a great brain integrator. Yeah. And I mean, playing a saxophone, he had problems with his breathing, but not a problem. He was going to learn it. And, uh, you know, I just absolutely adored that about him. He just he just kept learning. He just there wasn't anything he wasn't going to try or do. And learning to read music, and exercise, so the, the the saxophone and the tai chi, amazing brain integrators. These are the things that help us to stay integrated. So exercise is really important for our brain development, not just for our bodies, but for our brains. So you can teach an old dog a new trick. You really, you really can. You really, and he he was good. He was really good. I was so proud of him. But, and I mean, he didn't stop there. You know, he'd write a new book. He had, up to the day he died, he was producing stuff all the time. There mm. wasn't anything he didn't do. He was an actually amazing man. And so neuroplasticity at its best. But we all mm. can do this. We can all do this. Well, Nolene, you have a wealth of information. We want people to get their hands on it. Here's your website. Remember, grab your phone, hit the QR code, scan it. But what are they going to find here at the Brain Profiler website? <laughs> okay. So basically, you, a little bit of what we've talked about is that 
you know, the, this application can be for professionals, it can be for children, it can be for couples. It, you know, I, just because my passion is helping children, it's not because it's the only thing I do. So you'll see lots of different ways that this can help. Um, and you'll see some testimonials of people who've had this experience and, and done this with me. And really, it can be a life-changing experience for whole families, not just the one person who is being profiled. So you will see those things. Um, I do offer courses. I would like to be teaching this around the world so that we can get this into schools and into every, in, in, into every industry out there, mm -hmm. from recruitment to marriages to everything. So that's my dream. Let's make it happen. <laughs> yeah. What would be the biggest thing you would tell somebody who's just now beginning to hear this, catch this, and going, okay, so some of the stuff I was told was malarkey. There's more going on, and I need to understand more of my brain. What would you say to them? Well, you know, this is a, this is a starting point. This is not the end point. I think that that's an important thing to remember. Beginning to know this information is just the beginning. Okay, what do we do? How do we fix the things that are causing the problems? Okay, that's the next part of the problem. That's the next aspect. Um, and I really feel that, that self-appreciation and self-acceptance goes a long way to changing your life. Yes. It really goes a long way. I, I profiled a young man a while ago. He spoke French, so I couldn't really communicate with him. But he was there. His mother was translating. And at the end of the profile, and he had said nothing, he turned to his mother with this big smile on, her, on his face and he said, you see? And so, and, and she smiled and he smiled and she wrote to me the next day and said, that was life changing for us because he had dropped out of school. He was so miserable. I hadn't seen him smile for years. Um, you gave him hope. You gave him direction. He now is motivated. We can now work together. We can now find ways for, for thing, things for him to do that'll make him happy. And honestly, I cannot describe to you how happy that made me. But it's the beginning. It's not the end. <laughs> it is a one-off process, but it's the beginning of a process, not the end. Nolene Livingston, you want to remember her name? You want to go Google her, follow her, learn more about her? She's on LinkedIn and other places like that in the show description. We will have more information on how to find her and connect with her. No, Lane, thanks for taking the time and being with us on Rock the Stage tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it was a delight. No, Lane Livingston, again, brain profiler. What, what a crazy title. What a powerful thing she's doing with people. And, again, her mission, her passion is to get more global, glo more, more reach, and help literally kids like I was growing up that they did not understand. But look at me now. <laughs> this is Rock the Stage. I'm the Trigger Rich Monitor. We'll be back here next week again for another exciting conversation. Celebrity interviews, rock star interviews, experts from around the world like this. And we're wanting to shine the spotlight to let them share their brain thoughts, powerful thoughts, and help your life be richer and better and help you shine brighter. Don't forget, 7 o'clock Eastern Time, we're live on the PPN Network, the Public Place Network, every Sunday night. And on our YouTube channel, you can stream along and join the chat as you're doing here tonight with us. We'll be back here again, 7 o'clock Eastern time for Rock the Stage. Until next week, I'm the Trigger Rich Bond Trigger. Keep shining bright and have a great week. <laughs>